Hey friends, welcome back to another Seed Talk with Lisa and Lane. Hey Lane. Hello Lisa. I have to say, I'm just getting back from a trip to California and we went to the Getty Center in Los Angeles, which has a beautiful garden and they actually had a lot of little school groups touring And I have to tell you what I heard this little kid say. So we were standing there and whoever their tour guide was, she said, we can either keep sitting here doing nothing or we can go take pictures of flowers. And this little boy raised his hand and he said, my mother would choose flowers, but I would not. (laughs) And it just sounded so funny. He just said it right there. And she said, okay, thank you for that. Does anyone else have an opinion to share? (laughs) From the mouths of babes. I know. And I did see them taking pictures of flowers later. So I think some other children won out on that vote. But <laughs> yeah. How fun to go to a garden when you were a child. You know, oh, that, yes. you know, we had azaleas and rhododendrons were our big deal. And I mean, my parents weren't really gardeners. They had a great landscape. We were in deep shade. So we had hundreds of azaleas and oh. rhododendrons. But of course, in spring, it's glorious. But any other time of the year, they're just evergreen shrubs, right? So yes, didn't really have that introduction into gardening until my grandma when I was a young adult. But um, yeah, that is really cool. Yeah, it was really fun. So friends, thanks for dropping in. And if you are new here, we want to welcome you to the Seed Talk podcast and remind you that, hey, this is brought to you by thegardenersworkshop.com. And friends, we just invite you to come over. So Lane, what are we talking about today? Well, today we're going to be talking about when it might be a good idea to order plugs versus starting things from seed yourself. So we're just going to talk about what plugs are for anyone that doesn't know, what are the pros and cons, when you would order, where you would order, and then some common things that a lot of flower farmers such as yourself or other people you know often order as plugs instead of starting them themselves from seed. Yes, that's a really great topic because, you know, when you're first starting out, you know, you're bootstrapping and you automatically think, oh, I should start everything from seed, which I did that too. But there are some that actually can turn out to be a better economical gamble to purchase as plugs than to try to start from seed. Great. So let's get started. Okay, Lisa. So let's just start off with what are plugs for anyone that's not familiar with this term? So plugs are buying trays of plants, typically with more plants in the tray than what you would like find down at the local garden center. You know, when you go down to the garden center, you can buy a flat that has maybe six, six packs in it, which would be 36 plants. That's a classic um, retail option for you to purchase. Plugs are more plants in that same square footage. So that same size tray, has anywhere, let's see, I think I've seen them, 48 is occasionally available, but not very frequently, but from 72, are you ready, up to 312 little plants in that same size tray. It's all about the size of the, the plug is the size of the little hole where the plant grows in. That's what we kind of call the plug. Um, So it's really just all about what you're going to do with them when you get them, what plant you're talking about. Um, And so they come in various sizes, but it's getting more plants um, of a smaller size. Right. So rather than buying seed and then growing something to a transplant size yourself, you're actually buying these trays of seedlings or transplants that are ready to go. Exactly. Lisa, where can people order plugs if you're a home gardener and if you're a flower farmer? So home gardeners can't really, well, they could, I guess, but don't really want to order from the same place that flower farmers do because flower farmers, we order them from people like Farmer Bailey. It's called Farmer Bailey Plugs. Um, And then there's other companies like Ball Horticulture. There is Germania. Um, So there's lots of big brokers, we would call them. These are people that are like the middleman between you and the greenhouses for commercial growers. Greenhouses are not really interested in talking to you, the person that's buying five, 10, or even 20 trays. They talk to big brokers that that barter to buy, you know, 2,000 trays of one flower and then sell it to a bunch of different flower farmers, right? So a home gardener really wouldn't be interested in that because there's minimums. Um, And then there's shipping involved. So classically, um, a home gardener, occasionally, there are definitely online 
companies now that sell plants online. We know that, but we know now there are some that are starting to sell some of the plants that are kind of known as annuals, like Lysianthus, um, that aren't available down at your local garden center. Um, so I have heard from people that eat that park parks and burpee both will sell um, plugs of certain annuals at certain times of the year. So, um, so commercial growers, Germania, um, Farmer Bailey and Ball Hort, and then home gardeners, I would say you just really need to search engine what you're looking for and put for home gardening or, you know, just put it in and see what comes up. So what are some of the cons to ordering plugs, Lisa, before we talk about some of the pros? So the biggest con that I've experienced um, is damage that happens during shipping, which your grower, the greenhouse has nothing to do with that. I mean, unless they don't appropriately pack the boxes and that just doesn't happen anymore. If you're buying from reputable growers, um, from a reputable broker who would be dealing with reputable brokers, they really come packaged beautifully. But even when they're packaged beautifully, all it takes is in transit for a box that says this side up to be dropped upside down, which loosens the plugs and many of them can come out of their cell. But I will tell you, I've had that happen like maybe twice, maybe three times in my career. And they are such beautiful plugs. It just takes a few minutes for you to plug them back into their hole and they do just fine. I haven't ever actually lost any. Um, and, you know, so that is the only con that I see. Other people think the expense, because you do have to pay for shipping and it's overnight shipping usually because, you know, plants can't sit in a box, especially warm season time of the year for very long. Um, but that's really been the only con that I've really experienced. So plugs are obviously more expensive than just buying raw seed, but that's because someone else has paid for the seed and they've grown it to this yeah. size. And then of course they have to ship it to you. And then, like you said before, there is an order minimum. So if you're looking for just a small quantity, this might not be the best option for you. So what are the pros in your mind to ordering plugs instead of starting something from seed yourself? Let me just tell you, sitting here and looking, and friends, I want to remind everybody, if if you haven't jumped over on our YouTube channel and watched the beautiful slideshow that Lane always puts together for our talks, um, I'm looking at some gorgeous trays of Lysianthus plugs. And sitting here looking at this just reminds me so much back in the day when I thought I was going to start Lysianthus from seed. Um, because, you know, I just thought that plugs were too much of an investment for me at that point in time. Now, first, you have to know that Lysianthus seed is not notoriously the least expensive seed. So it's a little bit of an investment. It's definitely less than buying plugs, but it's still an investment. But the reason that we buy plugs is what, what makes it such a dismal situation when you try at home, because most often these are seeds that, that I would buy that, that just need special handling that I was not able to deliver. So looking at these full uniform trays of Lysianthus is like a dream come true to me. When I think of my first few trays of Lysianthus that I tried, I spent weeks and weeks and weeks and maybe had 20 or 30 odd size. None of them were uniform. Um, you know, they're just the the pros to buying plugs is just until you've done it, you just don't know what you don't know yet. Yeah, I think it's really great. Like you mentioned, for certain crops that might just be more difficult to grow in a home setting or even like in your farm growing, Lisa, some just prefer or require certain environmental conditions that are difficult for us to mimic. And these plug growers really have it down to a science. Yeah. I mean, they have temperature control greenhouses. I mean, everything is automated. And Lysianthus, as a great example, Lysianthus, um, most of the plugs that I purchased were plants that were known to be slow transplant growers. And I mean, that just means there's more ways for you to kill it. The longer it takes to get it to the size to put it out in the field, just gives you more and more opportunities to overwater, underwater, not deliver for the temperatures. For instance, Lysianthus. If Lysianthus doesn't get its needed temperature controls, which are very difficult to actually make happen for most of us, they'll grow on. You think everything is fine. You'll plant them out in the garden and they do what's called rosetting, where they just 
will never develop stems. They have beautiful foliage, but they never develop a stem with a flower. And that is basically from not having the proper temperatures during its younger life. So I like to say, Lysianthus holds a grudge. And you don't even know there's a grudge until after you've planted it out in the garden and you only have that have to happen to you once and you vow that that's never going to happen again. And that's what you can feel pretty assured that they are properly kept before you get them. So it's great for tricky to grow crops, crops that might take a lot of time to grow, which like you said, just opens you up for so many different ways where you could kill them and something can go wrong. It yeah. obviously saves you on time and labor, or maybe you're someone that during the time of year, you would need to be growing these. You're going to be on vacation or just away from home for some reason. Yeah. Maybe some people don't physically have the space to start as many seeds as they would need for their farm. That could be another reason too. And yeah. another thing is there are some varieties of flowers that can only be grown from cuttings or tissue culture, and they can't even be started from seed. Right. So that may be another reason to choose plugs. And you know, that's something that escaped me. Back when I was first starting out, you know, I know that there are types of status that are only available from tissue culture and they're just different looking flowers. They perform differently. Um, and, you know, so it's just there's a whole nother world of plants out there, but it is an investment. You know, as a flower farmer, we would never even think about this stuff until you have customers, till your business yeah. is up and running. Right. Um, so me spending you know, now I think four trays of Lysianthus, four trays of, I forget what size we've most recently gotten, but four trays delivered in a box, shipped in is like two to $300, I think. Well, that is a BB in the Astrodome to what those plants would return when they're sold, but you have to sell them. That's yeah. the problem. So this is like the goal set for flower farmers. This is um, there's just a lot of great options when you start considering certain types of plugs. Yeah. And it is an interesting thing to do to sit down and do a cost analysis. If there's a seed that maybe it's already a more expensive type of seed, or you don't get good germination on it in the first place. So you sow a hundred, but you only get 50 or less when you're ordering plugs, you're getting the amount that you're paying yeah. for. And so yeah. while it might seem that they're expensive at the onset, when you start taking into account yeah. the cost of the soil and actually sowing the seeds, what your germination rate might be, all the energy from your grow lights, the heat mats, the time and labor to water and care for them and fertilize them, it can really end up being a closer cost than you might think. Not to even mention the anxiety. Oh, true. <laughs> you know, I mean, so because like a crop like Lysianthus and like, you know, I, I think we're going to talk about eucalyptus. Those are significant cash crops to not have them is just a huge loss. So, yeah, you're so right. So, Lisa, when would you order your plugs? Like, let's say you want Lysianthus plugs. You're planning on planting them out in very early spring. When would you order those? Or if there was something you were planning on planting out in the fall, when would you order those? What's the lead time that you typically like to have? Sure. So what you need to know is that 99% of plugs are grown for you from your order. They aren't just growing these plants and then having them happen to be sitting there. You know, so you need to order them the number of weeks at least that it takes to grow the plants. For instance, Lysianthus, you allow 12 weeks is how long it takes them to grow that little plug. Um, so Dave Dowling's rule is that you never sit down to Thanksgiving dinner if you have not ordered your Lysianthus plugs. <laughs> I actually order even before then because my very early spring, because they're a cool flower, right? My very early spring planting date is mid-February, which is Valentine's Day. Um, so I even like right now is when we would be ordering, when we will be ordering Lysianthus plugs. Um, so you, you, you're to get what you want, you really should order as soon as you know, you want them. If you don't have to wait until it's time to order them, you can, you select the ship date. So, you know, they figure the rest of that out. Um, and it's just a great idea and you don't typically even get charged until they ship them. So it works out. I mean, it's, yeah, I didn't, I didn't never realize that until I started doing it, but um, yeah, so they're grown for you. So you have to give them at least the weeks that it needs to grow them. And if you wait till that last minute, they may not have, they may be sold out, which is a common occurrence today. 
something else too that I want to mention is it doesn't make you any less of a grower because you choose to buy some things as plugs. And I think some people feel like they're failing or giving up or less yeah. of a grower for some reason just by ordering plugs. But in reality, for most of the flower farmers that we interact with, a mix of starting from seed and ordering plugs ends up being what fits best for them. You know, that's such a great point, Lane. And I found, you know, back in my travel days when I was doing all these conferences, particularly master gardener conferences, I figured out that the reason that most of those people never applied the amount of compost that I recommend using out in your garden was because they were trying to make it all themselves. They felt like a loser if they had to buy compost. But let me just break that myth right now for you. Flower farmers buy tractor trailer loads of compost. You can't, there's few, I don't know anybody that makes enough compost for to sustain a flower farm. And that's yeah. a whole operation itself. It's the same thing with plugs. Um, but I had to hear it. You know, I can still remember Jenny Love saying to me, are you kidding me? You're still starting eucalyptus from seed by the plugs. And it's like, okay, if she's doing it, I can do it. Do yeah. You know? So that's what we're trying to say to you today, friends, is buy plugs when you need to. Okay, so now I wanted to talk about some of the specific flowers that either you commonly order as plugs, Lisa, or you've ordered them in the past as plugs, or some of your flower farming friends are known to order these. So let's just start with the one we've been talking about a little, which is Lysianthus. Sure. So it takes at least, if it takes the professionals 12 weeks to get a half inch tall transplant growing into perfect conditions. You can imagine how long it takes somebody that doesn't have that kind of control. Um, so I began, I guess, golly day, I bet I've ordered Lysianthus plugs for 15 years, um, maybe 10 years. Um, I tried to start from seed, as I mentioned earlier. Um, but once you get a few started and you see the flower and you see how long they last and you see how much people love them, you want more and you're not will. I wasn't willing to risk not having, you know, a full bed. I mean, we used to plant when we went out of high production, we used to plant like 12,000 Lysianthus plants every very early spring. That is a lot of Lysianthus. Uh -huh. It was a very important crop. Um, so the length of time that it took um, I just am not that focused of a seed starter as much to most people's surprise. You know, if I'm starting it from seed, it's a pretty easy keeper. You know, I'm not a helicopter seed starter at all. I could visit my grow room in the morning, take care of business in there. And then there, I don't see them again till the next morning. Um, and so Lysianthus just proved to be more than I could tackle. Plus the timing of when you need to start it, it's a little off from most of your other cool flowers. Yeah. So it really would require a lot of special attention and then time growing in your grow room. And that's, that's a good point. So through Christmas, you know, right. if it takes three months for the pros to get it. So let's say February to January, yeah, I would have, like the first of November is when I would have to be starting that Lysianthus. Um, and so, yeah, that's a really good point. That just fuels the opportunities to kill it. So how about Campanula or Canterbury Bells? Yeah, so um, the, the, the Campanula that we grow is the Champion Series. It's very specific because it behaves like a hardy annual, meaning it will go from seed to bloom without a vernalization or length of time specific cold treatment. Um, it does have some day length requirements, but we fall plant it. Um, and it's kind of like Lysianthus. Um, it just needs a lot of special temperature controls. Um, and so once, once you start ordering one plug to be planted at a specific season, then you start considering what other flowers might I not be growing because they're a struggle that I could add. And that's how I got on the Campanula um, deal. And I'll tell you, we have grown some of the most scrumptious Campanula. I mean, we'll grow four foot tall out in our garden and it is so amazing. And I was never able to do that starting the seed myself. And it was about, I mean, we know now for a fact that the seedling life, the way that they, how healthy they are affects the performance of the overall plant for the rest of its life. Kind of like puppies are that way too, puppies and kittens. Um, and we know that getting healthy transplants just goes on to be more disease resistant, more abundant. 
Um, and I lived that with Campanula because I grew, I wasted so much time starting them and they struggled and I still planted them. And then you get puny plants and then they're like, I never grown that again. So Campanula is the champion series is a great plug to add to the lineup. And like you mentioned before about the shipping, there's often an advantage if you can fill a box. Yes. Can you explain how that works and how that can help you make the most of those shipping fees? So most suppliers have standard size boxes and how many trays kind of box, and that's four. So four trays of four 285s or four 72s, you know, the tray is the same size. It's the plug cell um, that changes. And so, yeah, four, that's the biggest bang for your buck is to, I mean, and I've even had suppliers call me and say, hey, you only ordered seven plug trays. Why don't you get an eighth? You know, I mean, there's going to yeah. be no difference in the shipping. So, yeah, so it's it definitely has a savings. Okay, how about Digitalis or Foxgloves? So I start so Digitalis, I started um companion I'm not companion, I'm sorry, Foxy from seed for many years, but as we started getting into some of the other, you know, Dalmatian and um some of the other varieties, um I just found it a lot simpler to just buy the plugs. And another thing is you could buy, if again, if you're trying to fill a box, you can buy a tray of 285 Digitalis and 285 everything if it's available that size and get a lot of plants in a small space. Um, and so we really, what was it? Is it Dalmatian and Camelot? Right. Yes. Um, and and we also bought Foxy even as plugs. You just find, I mean, my Campanula, I mean, my, I'm sorry, Digi, I'm looking at the Campanula picture. I'm going to block it. The Digitalis. <laughs> Um, is a fairly good germinator, but it's kind of sensitive to temperatures. So it just seemed to lend itself to being a great one to add to the plug list. How about eucalyptus, which you tend to typically start it from seed, but I know like you mentioned, other farmers that you've talked to tend to order plugs. Yeah. And I'm actually going to order some to come in alongside our Lysianthus if um, if they're available to try out some of these different um, varieties. I actually saw them when I was at the ASCFG Southeastern Conference where I spoke um, a couple weeks ago. And it just reminded me when I ordered Lizzie's, maybe I won't get four trays of Lizzie's. We'll mix it up a little bit. And I think eucalyptus is going to come on because that is a slow grower. We have really good luck starting in a small soil blocker. Then we bump it up to the larger two inch block. I don't do that on many things, but for eucalyptus, we're not growing hundreds and hundreds of plants. Um, so it works out really well, but I'm excited to think I might have some um, new varieties to grow. We'll see. Time will tell if you get, if I get my order in early, maybe before this airs, maybe Ooh. I'll have a chance. <laughs> yes. Are there any other flowers that you know of that people commonly order plugs yes. for? So um, a couple other cool flowers that come to mind and a, a three of them. Trichelium is a beautiful, beautiful plant, but it is. it's a little dicey to start from seed, you know, so most people just ditch it and move on. Um, and then the other one that is a perennial that we actually treat like a cool flower that can be fall planted are delphiniums. Most of the honky, big, gorgeous delphiniums are nearly impossible to start from seed. Um, you know, we have started the um, delphinium belladonna orientalis. That's the easiest one to start from seed, but that's not the big double blooms. So we used to get plugs delivered twice a year in the fall. And then in very before very early spring. And so in my fall order, I would get delphiniums to come in um, because they are just amazing. It's it's just quite an experience to plant healthy transplants versus those struggling ones that you've been nursing along and trying to get them around the block. So those are two. And then I tell you another one that Dave Dowling flipped my thought on this. Um, you know how he likes to recommend planting group one and two snapdragons in late summer for fall blooms, right? Well, it's typically too hot everywhere to get snapdragon seeds to start. So he quoted, I think he said, you can order snapdragon plugs in the middle of summer to be delivered, you know, in late summer. And I think it's like 18 cents a plant or something. I mean, it's like so worth it if you have yeah. a market to sell them. So it's funny how the more you learn, the more ways you find there might be a better use of your time 
than trying to struggle to start snapdragons in the dead of summer when it's 100 degrees outside. That's a really great point with the snapdragons. And I've heard of some people, either they struggle with that one, getting it to germinate so they don't want to deal with it, or they just grow such high volumes of snapdragons that it's so much easier for them to just order everything as plugs. Yeah. So order a box, four trays. If you're a flower farmer, pick out four things that can be very early spring planted. I mean, I can't imagine shipping during summer. That adds another component, but we're talking about cool flowers, right? Primarily fall right. and very early spring planting and the weather. I mean, they can't really get too cold. I mean, now if they were shipping out of, you know, Milwaukee or somewhere, they might, but typically this is the perfect time to, to ship plants. One other flower I wanted to mention is Iceland poppies. Have you ever ordered plugs for those? You know what? I'm glad you reminded me. I actually grew plugs last year, the year before I ordered champagne bubbles and kohlrabi, the Italian, um, to compare oh, yes. to, um, to field grow them. And um, yeah, and they did great. They yeah. did great. All right. Well, that does it for this episode of Seed Talk. Let us know in the comments section over on YouTube or using the form linked in the show notes if you order anything as a plug instead of starting it from seed and which varieties you like to do that for or if you do it for all the varieties of that particular flower. And please be sure to share Seed Talk with a friend if you are enjoying it. And as always, remember to follow or subscribe wherever you're watching or listening so you won't miss any of our future episodes. And thank you so much for being here again. So Lane, thanks for a great episode. I think this one's going to be really helpful for people because this is something, it's like it's not talked about, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of like, it's not that it's a secret. It's like nobody, we kind of fumble through and find our way. So friends, um, if you find that you need tools, supplies, seeds, books, or an online course, remember us over at thegardenersworkshop.com because we love helping equip you grow great cut flowers. All right, friends, till we meet again. Ciao. Bye.